you're disgusting. I can't believe you're even doing drag. You're not great. You're horrible. Get the hell off my TV screen, bitch. Welcome to Too Much. Our podcast about, well, whatever. From issues of the world to topics of lesser grandeur. We've got you covered with a little bit too much to say about everything. So let's start the show. Holla at me, I know you know me. Holla at me, I know you know me. Bitch, I've been around before. Google, this is Michael. And, <laughs> oh my God. And I will not be subscribing to the Tamishi Mon Network. My name's Cody. Hate, t- t- er, hater. Hater? I mean, why not? It's really expensive. What was the, the I think she said for one event, it's $50. And for a month subscription, it's $25. That's ridiculously expensive. Yeah. I'm not it, even the top tier on Baba Monet's uh, sibling, um, what's it called? Patreon. Yeah, Baba Monet of a top Patreon. You know what? It's really expensive. And it's like a website you have to go on to. And she's saying she has like three shows booked. And she's going to have panel discussions with a she lot of girls. Five. Oh, it's five shows? My yeah. bad. Um. I probably just don't care for the content much either. Are you a Tamisha Mon fan? I haven't been watching her lives that she's been doing since for the past four months. Okay. So no. (laughs) By this time, you've probably figured it out. Or if you're listening, you see it in the title. This is all about Tamisha Iman. That is what we're talking about today. She has been the hot topic in the... LGBTQ community for the past week. She's the name on everyone's tongue. Why? Like, why now, do you think? Why now? I I don't know. I guess she's just bitter. Ooh, not the bitter. I think she's bitter and she's probably been having conversations. Well, she said she's been having conversations with other girls. I guess her and other girls have been commiserating about... Uh, the critiques that they've gotten from sibling watchery. Well, I want, I'm a big fan of Bob. Um, to the point where you got me a cameo for my birthday that Bob did. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I like Monet a lot. Bob is in my top five favorite drag queens, period. Monet, not really in top five, but I love Monet a lot. But um, with Tamisha Iman, it feels like she is... A certain type of queen from a certain era, and that's how they they do it in Atlanta in her age bracket, and she's comfortable with it. And I don't think it's bad, but it's not everyone's cup of tea. The type of drag she does, the type of performance she gives as an older queen, because we've seen videos of her back in the day. She would kick, do the dip, and bring it back up. She doesn't do that right now, and it's okay. She also dresses a certain type of way, and that's fine. I think a lot of her drag is beautiful. And some other times I see her and I'm like, that's not something I personally like. And when I and that's just an opinion. Doesn't mean I want her to go burn it and change it for me. Uh, but when sometimes when you've been doing it for so long and she always lets you know, 30 years, 30 years in the game, when you've been doing it for so long and someone comes and critiques you and the critique is not favorable, then it almost feels like, are you trying to discredit my entire career and everything I've built? Okay, whoa. I don't know. I'm just trying. I'm just trying to like reasoning it, reason it out to see why I think she said Monet's comments got to her. She said that she she claims she can take a critique, and she's like, I'm a I'm a designer. I don't care if someone like talks about the outfit I made. Like that's just part of the game. But. I think maybe she has a, a bigger problem with how it influences the fans. Right, she did say that. Which I can that. understand. She's like, if a popular queen says this and this about you, then you're labeled that forever. Right. So, Which, But I don't think they've said, I don't think they've really labeled it. Ooh. You know what I mean? You know, like there are certain queens that get labeled cheap queen, you know, or certain right. queens get labeled trash queen. She wasn't labeled anything negative, in my opinion. Uh, she, t- first of all, Tamisha Iman is the queen of freaking Instagram live <laughs> at this point. Mm-hmm. She did probably four or three lives within a week. And most of them were like promoting today. Today's Tuesday. 
we just got done watching her YouTube video that she was raving about the entire past week. And in these multiple lives, some of them she was in full drag, some she wasn't. She talked a lot about the fandom and how toxic they are and how, you know, rude they are. She doesn't take it personally. She blocks them and moves on with her life. Then she talks about her merchandise and how she's been having issues with getting it out on time with people and she's working on it and she's going to, and other stuff. But what stood out and what got everyone in a frenzy was when she's like, you guys kept coming for me and my drag on the show. You don't know me. You just saw a part of the type of drag I have. Please remember. And I'm like paraphrasing. She's like, remember, I couldn't walk. I was sick. And then I got to go back on the show. I went on the show so I could live, not to compete. I didn't care to win. That was her exact words. I went on the show to live. I didn't go to win. And I get what she means by that. It's just that you're an older queen. You're going on the show to have the experience and to get the sisterhood and to be a part of this family, you know? But if you don't win, it's fine. I think everyone who goes on the show is a winner. But she's like, I go on the show and then here I come seeing people that I thought were cool, like just reading me. And Monet specifically, she's like, a lot of people did it, but Monet's the one I'm going to make an example out of. Why do you think she's going to make, she wants to make an example out of Monet as opposed to let's say Violet, because I believe Violet was on pits, the pit stop one week when Tamisha was on the show and Violet read everyone. Yeah, Violet did read everyone. I think that Monet is popular, so it works in Tamisha's favor to go after Monet. But at the same time, I think the Black Queens are, are valued less, so it's easier. It's an easier target to go at. Hmm. So do you think if... Do you think she was thinking when she said, Monet is the one I want to make an example out of, or I'm going to make an example out of? Let me not go for, let's say, Alaska or Willem. I don't even know if Alaska or Willem ever said anything bad about her looks. They probably never did. I'm not saying that. I'm using them as an example, as white queens who react and review the show as well. Why do you think she's thinking, if I go after them it might garner a different type of reaction as opposed to a Monet. Yeah. From the fans. I think so. But she clearly states that she doesn't care what the fans say because no one can tell her how to feel. I know, but she still, if she wants this to be a thing, there still has to be some momentum to it. I think if she was to say, oh, I'm going, well, first of all, maybe Monet is an easier target too because her whole thing this weekend was... I'm going to read Monet's looks on Tuesday. Yeah. If she had been like, I'm going to read Alaska's looks on Tuesday, I don't think it would have had the same impact because to read Alaska's looks, you would have had to go back pretty far. Mm -hmm. Whereas Monet was actually on national television in some pretty bad looks that you could read for filth. Yeah. But I think it would be so weird to, to see her go up against one of the most popular queens to come out of that show right? versus going up against Monet. It's a little bit more accessible, I, I, I feel like. I don't know, because Monet is really popping. <laughs> like, she's one of the most successful queens right now in 2021. She works like crazy. Um, but any, why, she go, why she chose to use Monet as the example, I don't know. Maybe we'll, you guys will find that out when you go and sign up to the Tamisha Iman Network for $25. And or... Monet hasn't even been that critical of her. No. And because... on top of her not being that critical, she's on a show with Bob, who has been Tamisha's biggest supporter. Right. Bob the Drag Queen, from the moment the cast was revealed, Bob was campaigning on Twitter, Instagram, get Tamisha Iman's following to over 100,000 within a week. Bob got her that 100,000 follower mark. Yeah, and then so, Bob was like, get it to 200, get it further. You so know? even if we lived in a world where Monet was dragging her, if she's if she's dragging her and she's on a show where there's like, whatever, good cop, bad cop, yeah. and Monet's like, blah, 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 but then Bob's saying all this great stuff, as Tamisha, I wouldn't even go after Monet because none of your points really stand about, oh, you're getting branded this way. The fans are going to think of you this way. Because you already have both sides represented. Because then Bob's going to be like, no, I think she looks great. I don't agree with this. I don't agree with that. And then it's actually like a healthy dialogue about the critique. 
It's not like they were both sitting up there dragging her. I agree. And we watched the video of the, the sibling rivalry put together a montage of everything that they've said about Tamishi Mon over this season. I watched it. It was like... And it's not horrible. Not bad. Like, I watch all of Bob and Monet's um, videos anyways, but watching it compiled back to back, I was like, yeah, Monet didn't love every single look you wore on the runway. I'm a huge Tamisha Iman fan. I didn't love every single look either. But even They're, when she didn't love it, she wasn't... You know, mean about it. Exactly. She wasn't mean about it. Try being, try being Joey J oh. and getting dragged every single week. Well, she's only on the show for, what, three episodes? Or being um, Elliot. Or being Elliot. Those queens, I will say, Joey J or Elliot, they got dragged for their looks. And I personally, I react to the show, so I do give my two cents about what the, what I like and what I don't like. And I didn't like a lot of them. I wasn't mean about it. You might think otherwise, but I did not think Monet was mean towards Tamisha specifically. No, I don't think she was mean towards Tamisha. Um... I screenshotted it, but Joey J tweeted today. Oh, yeah. Everyone's on Twitter, and everyone is just, yep, flapping their gums, I and know. I'm loving it. Before before the live started, so this was this afternoon, Joey J tweeted, Drag Race winners hitting on a Drag Race queen is dot, 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 interesting, lol. And then Elliot also retweeted it, and she said, I mean, dot, 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 with like a shrug and some nail polish emojis. Mm-hmm. Both super bitter, I guess, about <laughs> what Bob and Monet had said about them. But my thing is, you can't go on the show expecting people not to talk about Your what looks. you wear on yeah. the show. And comments about what you wear are not comments about you as a person. Or or your drag. And also, not everybody has to like your fashion or your drag. It's like everyone always says, drag is art. Art is subjective it depends on who is like what's the word who is like absorbing it and taking it in true um so with Bo <laughs> i don't understand why they're so pissed i just cannot get it if some if someone had a show and they were like you know what's funny remember when bob was on the pit stop and bob was like i just don't get blair st Clair. i'm not a fan Lord yeah of yeah I would have expected Blair to be like crying wolf and be like, this is a lot. And Blair was like, this is the game. And she never once replied or gave it any breath. But Blair's from, life. Blair, that was all stars. Blair's from earlier season. These new girls are like, I don't know. They just expect every, I mean, I know it's worse because, you know, like you review Drag Race. Reviewing Drag Race has become like its own little cottage industry, like its own genre. It is. So the fandom has become really big and, and you know, Twitter's more popular than it ever was, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But these girls know that people are going to say things about them. You're going, you're becoming a public person. Yep, that is true. Um, I don't see why people are mad. I just feel like if you're a public figure in general, even if you're on Drag Race and you're a C, D list celebrity, Z list, I don't care, or you're a stand up comedian, once you have a following, you're verified on the internet or whatever, people will see whatever you do, whatever your art is. If your art is to be like Howard Stern and sit behind a mic and talk, or it's to be like a politician and you go and do that, you're Wendy Williams, you're a drag queen. People will have an opinion, and the internet is a free place for people to voice those opinions. Some people will take it too far, and they will send you hate and be threatening, and that is never okay. But if someone is just saying, I am not a fan of your work, you should not let it affect you that badly. Yeah. Because you cannot control it. You can, you can only control your reaction. And not everyone in the world is going to like you. Yeah. Some people, like, if you tweet, like, oh, I don't like Joey J. Like, I don't like what she's on the show. I don't like that type of queen. Like, you're just voicing your opinion. Joey J can't expect everyone who watches Drag Race to love her. No. Definitely not. And that's the most frustrating thing about the whole Tamisha Mon thing, because she was a fan favorite, one of the most loved queens on the season. She was. I really thought she was going to blow up in the best possible way. And when I saw this whole thing happening, I was a little bit like weirded out. And I'm like, 
I didn't know she was affected by these things because she seemed so calm, put together, and Mature. seasoned. Yeah. I was like, she's a seasoned woman. She is a queen that knows how to play the game and know how to do it well. Yeah, she was selling her merch from the beginning. Yeah. I was like, okay, no, she's into this. So this is going to be great for her. She's not, I never thought she would make it all the way. Right. But I was like, okay, she's going to do a cute little run on the show. And she'll sell her merch and she'll up her booking fee. And then I assume she would come back for All Stars. Oh, yeah. I feel like if this, if well, apart from the Monet thing, she's been like, having is- wow. she's been having issues with WoW. She... The video she did for the reunion, it feels like she spent her money on it and this was all her thing. And But because it was aired on the show, the show has rights to it. Yeah. And so she put it on YouTube. Viacom used a shell company to block it. And she, she got emails from them saying what she can and cannot say. And so she feels like now my lawyers have to be involved in everything I do. And I hate Drag Race and I don't want to be a part of Drag Race because... They give opportunities and work to other queens. And then for queens like me, and I'm not just saying black queens. When I say queens like me for her, I'm not saying to black queens specifically, but queens that are not that popular or not desired by World of Wonder. They feel like they're left behind and just, you know, shit. She, the, I mean, I don't know. I don't really know if she has that much of a personality, but she was well liked. She could have been a WoW favorite. She could. She was definitely going to come back on All Stars with this whole storyline about her, you know, still recovering from cancer and with the the ostom, ostomy bag. Right. There would have been a whole redemption story bringing her back for All Stars. Now she's healed up. What will it be like now? She was a fan favorite. Wow, could have gave her one of those little green screen shows. Next time she's in LA, shoots a few episodes of that. Like, I think she was in a good spot. I think so too. I guess she just was not here for them and she was like, I'll do it on my own, which is totally fine. I want to go back to Twitter because when this all happened, the Vixen tweeted. Oh, God, yeah. And I feel like the reason why the Vixen got involved because when Tamisha went on live, she was like, I'm going to get a bunch of the girls that have been wronged by the fans on the show and I'm going to talk to them and blah, blah, blah. And she said, I'm going to get the Vixen and I'm going to get Tyra Sanchez. Now, Tyra... Joel James, formerly known as Tyra, I don't know if James is interested, cares about it or whatever, but Tamisha mentioned them both because, you know, they're black queens that are very controversial and they've been through it with the fans. Mm -hmm. And fast forward, the Vixen went on Twitter and she's like, what we're not going to do is like try to gaslight a black queen who is speaking up for you know, other queens being bullied by some something another type of black queens. Basically saying Monet and Bob are a different type of black queen that are like bullying other black queens. I was like, I don't get this. Well, it's this whole... It's this whole like Vixen is like a black queen with a black audience Mm -hmm. and Bob and Monet are black queens that have crossed over. And once you cross over... There's that whole like you're you're not black enough at this sellout point. stereotype. Yeah. It's like oh well, you're, you're Wow's favorites, so you just do whatever Wow says, and you're not really of the people, sort of thing. Child, all I know is I don't like when people are like trying to compare their blackness. If you're black and you talk like this, or you're black and you talk like this, you're same. You're still black. That's a very <laughs> vixen thing to do, though. <laughs> you're black as black, baby. Uh, yeah, so the Vixen did that. I think Monet responded and Bob responded. And it just, I hate to see it because these are all girls that I like. Bob and the Vixen worked together on Black Girl Magic and they toured together with BB and all and Shay. Mm -hmm, I'm mm -hmm. like, why, like, where did this come from? You didn't think Bob was black enough then when he was doing this whole Nubia tour with you? And the, the premise was all about being black. Vixen just feels like one of those... I don't know. She's a, one of those like pro-black people who's like pro-black to the point where they're like holding themselves back. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> I don't know. 
Oh uh, boy, it. I kind of understand what you mean, though. It's like, like her lens, her lens of the world is so colored by like her trauma and her experiences that she refused to see anything else any other type of way. When I think of the vixen, I remember a very important and very powerful conversation Asia O'Hara had with the vixen while on the show. On this, like, the episode the vixen went home. She's like, I understand what you mean and what, what, with the Eureka and why you're mad. But because I've, I've been through it too. As a black person, you carry a lot of trauma. You've been through a lot of stuff and a lot of microaggressions really mess with you. But you have to stop and think, are you mad at this person specifically or are you just mad at the situation or what you've been through and what they represent to you? Mm -hmm. Because this person is just probably not really doing much to you, but the thought of them being in your presence and taking up your space just takes you back to a really ugly place where persons just like them would put you down and make you feel, you know, less than. So you just don't like them for that reason. And I saw the vixen crying and I'm like, I understand what Asia O'Hara is saying. I know the vixen gets it. And maybe this is an aha moment for her where she's going to move forward with trying to decipher who is an enemy and who is just like, you know, who's not. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But um, with the whole gaslighting thing, vixens automatically taking Monet... Uh, automatically taking Tamisha's side in it because she's saying, oh, we shouldn't be gaslighting Tamisha by saying she shouldn't uh, like be att attacking Monet. Mm -hmm. But the facts are in front of us. Like everything Tamisha's complaining about, she's not complaining about things that Monet did behind the scenes. Right. She's complaining about critiques that Monet said, but we've all watched it and the evidence is right in front of it. So I think it's really weird for the, vic the vixen to come out and be like, I'm going to support this this black queen because she's making accusations. The other girl on the other side is black too. Yeah. Why does that not matter to you at all? Because in to me at this point, it's not a black or some... It's uh, not a race issue. Yeah, it's no longer a black or something else issue. They're two black people. So what's your point? Um, I just feel like the vixen is a type of person that wants to speak out any chance she gets, whether it is for a good cause or a cause that will serve her, I don't know. She's almost like that that caricature of people who are, like, too woke. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. But back to Tamisha Iman. She was just talking a lot. She's like, I'm going to read Monet. She said this so many times. The first video she did with it was, like, at 3 in the morning or 5 in the morning in full drag talking about, I'm going to read Monet on Tuesday. It became a whole meme. I'm going to read you on Tuesday. The way I'm going to read you on Tuesday. That's yeah. all I'm seeing on my timeline. And she went, she came back the next day and she said it again. Tuesday, wait for it. I'm going to read you. Now here, Tuesday, I sit in front of my um, freaking Instagram. The live is buffering. I'm like, is it my internet? I turn off my Wi-Fi. I turn off my, my Wi-Fi to the house and then I'm just using my data still buffering i'm like the internet's not my problem it's on your end go on youtube watch it on youtube and i am cooking and i'm listening and i am listening and i am disappointed if i had paid money for this i would have wanted a refund yeah there was no reading all she did was comment on all the things that people have brought up over the past few days it's like I knew this. What did I tell you the other day? The other day? I'm like, I feel like she's going to wait until later in the day to do it, one. And two, when she does it, it's going to leave a bad taste in my mouth or less. I'm going to feel like I didn't get my money's worth, even though I didn't pay for nothing. I spent my time. Because you can't build up to something so much. Because if you do that, you better be coming with a Beyonce level performance. Mm -hmm. Like you better come with a reading session so legendary that Paris is Burning looks like, you know, it didn't even exist. And that is not what the children got today. And, but then she also said it's never coming because she doesn't want to bully. I'm like, well, because then she'd be doing the same thing that uh, <laughs> Monet does. And what I'm about to say, it's with love. <laughs> <laughs> and with sugar plums and fairies 
bitch, didn't you know this was going to be bullying from the freaking day one? Mm-hmm. What the fuck? She just wants people... Well, And she also... I mean, kudos to her because she wants to monetize the attention that this is bringing. Yeah. Which, yeah, get your coins while you can. You might... Why read Monet for free on Instagram Live when the whole uh, gay internet is taught... Well, not the whole gay internet, but... I just feel like I was bamboozled. This. And I know a lot of people are going to be mad and on the internet cursing and just carrying on. You know what? This is the meme was um, when you have a test on and Tuesday. You have a book report due on Wednesday. On Wednesday. And, and you're like. the clip of her saying, I am going to read your ass on Tuesday. <laughs> yes. So now the next meme for that is, I fell asleep and I failed the test because yeah. <laughs> you didn't read nothing. Absolutely. I am so done. Um, so yeah, she talked a lot about her merch fans and the bullying online and everything. And people were under the comments talking. Who was under the comments? I don't even remember. But anyways. Oh, Trinity K. Bonet was in there. Trinity K. Bonet, who's rumored to be an All-Star 6, who's someone I really like. I think she's a really great queen. She'll never win Drag Race because she... <laughs> that, because, no, because Drag Race is a machine. It's a TV show. And she doesn't give what a TV show needs from a winner. Mm. You have to give drama. You have to give storyline. And she's a very quiet person. Yeah. She'll give you a good performance and she'll give you a good look. And I love her for that. But she's not going to give you the cattiness and the drama that reality TV needs. Which is fine. Stick to your integrity. I love that about her. Um, yeah. She was saying, oh, everyone's coming on here to watch this because it's drama. Y'all don't support her if it's not drama. Well, yeah. People are going to support something that they find entertaining. And some people go on her live to just listen to her talk about, I don't know, eating grapes. or <laughs> And that's fine. But the majority of people in the gay community... It's like a live. You know? The majority of people in the community that supports Drag Race likes Drag Race for the cuntiness of it all. But also she looped in somebody else's fan base. Yeah. So now all of us sibling rivalry fans are going to come and see what's going on here. Exactly. It's no longer just Tamisha Iman fans that were on the live. It was all of Bob's and Monet's fans that are like, we want to see what you're going to say about them now. And at this point, we got nothing. Tamisha wants us to go and pay $25 a month to go see her on a... So you guys have been listening to the podcast. Thank you. But if the Too Much Podcast isn't enough, there's a whole lot more content on Michael's YouTube. Yeah, I post like every single week and I have literally too much going on over there. Hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and please drop a comment and tell us what you thought or what you'd like to see Michael do next. Bye. Oh, no. Back to the show. Panel with other girls who felt like Drag Race had forgotten them. I know Dina Ritz was on Twitter the other day saying, Wow Presents, what did I ever do to you? Why do you not? Why do you treat me so badly? So I know Dina might be on the show. Um, who knows? Some other girls that don't like Wow. And I get it. But what are they going to sit around and just talk about how they don't like Drag Race? It feels that way. It feels like they're going to all come on a panel and talk about how the fans treated them which is valid, and how they felt treated by the production of WoW and RuPaul since the show, which is also valid. If you want to hear people talk about that type of stuff, then this is the place for you to go. Like, don't buy Starbucks for the next two weeks and put the money there. Like, I'm pretty sure you'll get something entertaining out of it. Yeah, I mean, she said some of the money is going to the girls who aren't working. Yeah. So, so maybe, I mean... Obviously, Drag Race is a big production. I'm sure there's there's problems and, you know, some people butt heads with production and stuff like that. But some of these girls also just have piss poor attitudes. <laughs> Tyra Sanchez, she called her name. And I don't know if Tyra will come on the show, but using her as an example, I don't know really what type of redeeming message Tyra has at this point. 
Tyra has multiple times done stuff that it's like unthinkable, unspeakable, unfathomable. And then she's re like repented and apologized. And then she was regressed into doing the unspeakable and the bad things again. So I don't know what else she has to really say. Her story has been pretty straightforward online for years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and a queen like Dita, I think I was talking to you about it too. I like Dita Ritz. I think she's a great performer. But again, when you're talking about a TV show, don't think of Drag Race as a pageant. It's like a pageant, but on steroids. So on a TV show, it's not just about giving a good lip sync performance. You have to give a good look. You have to give a good visual so people can be like, you know, interested. Because a lot of the fan base, they're young and they want to see something new, innovative and like beautiful. And Dita and is personality. beautiful, but I mean, like look wise, like a, a garment, and then personality. The Your most personality plays thing. into it too. Like some of these girls just give no energy in the confessionals. Nothing. How often do you see winners who don't have like funny confessionals? You know what I mean? I mean, Simone's confessionals were never funny to me, but at least in it, the challenges, in the challenges, Simone gave us a lot of you know, isms and the neck rolls and the, is your blood sugar low? You know, all those things. So she was memeable. She was funny. People related to her. I think some of the girls are naive in thinking that All Stars is, is literally just um, a chance, like a second <laughs> chance at doing the show. Yes. All no, Stars All is Stars is VH1 and WOW trying to take the viewership from the show and bring all these people who are popular with the fans back again. It doesn't matter who wins or any of that. They're just making a television show. Period. If you think about it, there was like a season where I was like a few of the All-Stars cast. I was like, why? Because their following is not big. And that was like, okay, you have to mix in a few girls that you know are fillers. But the majority of All Stars cast is always girls with upwards of a million followers, girls that go on tours, have $20,000 to burn on brand new costumes just for the show. Mm -hmm. Rich queens go back on All Stars. It's not, yeah, that too. But it's not girls who are your, need to know what they've been doing since they were on the show. Like, oh, yeah. what's she been up to? It's usually girls who are you're like, oh, I know what she's been up to because I see her on Instagram all the time. Exactly. Doing this and doing that. I feel like you're right. The na there's a little bit of naivety where that's concerned. You have to know your audience and know what they're looking for. And sorry, it's not you. Um, at the beginning of Tamisha's live, she played um, that weird three second clip. Oh my of, God. I was so Bob. aggravated. I was washing dishes and I almost like cut myself because I'm like, what's going on here? She's like, let me just play you this clip, of, this clip of Bob. And she, she does like the screen share. Plays this clip of Bob saying, oh, I look cute today. So I talked to Mishi Mont, and then she presses pause and that's it. It was literally just and, four and I seconds. I thought she was going to talk about it and then get back to it, but she never did. She said, that's, a, that's all I'm going to play. And we're like, okay, what is this video? Is it new? Is it old? What does it mean? She never referenced it. I was like, why did you even play that? But then she went into this whole rant about how she's always respected Bob. She still respects Bob. I think... But She's being super vague. I feel like Bob and Monet and Tamisha, they probably had a conversation and they decided to do this thing where Bob is going... But right now as we're recording, Bob is on like live talking about Monet's looks. But the, Bob and Tamisha and Monet are going to have a sit-down conversation, two-part. We are uh, uh, They're going to do the first part and it's going to be available on Patreon. For Bob and Monet's sibling rivalry Patreon. And then the second part is going to be available on Tamisha Iman's... The Tamisha Iman Network. Network uh, for $25 a month or $15 for one viewing. And I feel like this was a last minute deal that they brokered. Because just as the live ended with Tamisha Iman, we were getting notifications on our phones about the, pa the Patreon with Bob and Monet, what's happening. And then we're like, Okay, they just solidified this deal. And that's why Tamisha was probably holding off on reading Monet. And, but it kind of left a sour taste in my mouth because she's like, um, she seems like the type of woman who's a woman of her word. And she was like, today, 
Don't forget, like, oh, I'm not going to forget. I'm going to read Monet. Don't, don't think I'm forgetting Monet. I'm going to read her. I'm going to do it. And then you did the whole video and you didn't. It's like, can I trust you? Are you going to lure me in with false hopes and then don't give me what you promised? Yeah. Well, that's my thought on Mr. Misha Iman. I don't know if she's better, but what I do know is that she is a brilliant strategist and she <laughs> knew that coming for Bob and Monet collectively or even Monet alone would generate views and it worked. Yeah, it worked. it worked. She got all the eyeballs on her to promote her network that she's, you know, going to be starting up. And congratulations on that. Her overpriced network. The content better be freaking amazing. It's not going to be. I just, I just, I'm telling you right now. I mean, look at the quality of the of her YouTube shows. They're not great. Her team is obviously not great. She they, has can't a team. Even, they can't even send out merch orders. She has a team. Well, did Within you, four months. Did you see what she's talking? She has a team of four people, by the way. At one point, she was like, oh, this person that worked with me, blah, blah, blah. She deleted a bunch of my orders, and I'm going to be pressing charges. I was like, how? Oh, I thought, no, I thought somebody hacked into her yeah, website. Was, like, so, yeah, something like that. Someone hacked into her, and she's going to press charges. I was like, okay. This Anyways, is not the tea I came here for, but I guess that's what I'm getting. These like panel conversations she has, I feel like it's going to be more like just her house. Mm. You know what I mean? Like once in a while, maybe she'll... Well, she says she has five shows planned right now, so maybe she has five Drag Race girls. Mm -hmm. But I'm thinking filling out most of these conversations are probably her local Atlanta girlfriends. Yeah. And it's like, what are they? They're not going to talk about anything rel like relevant to me. They're not. I'm sure they're not going to talk about Drag Race. Tamisha's the only one that's been on it. Right. If you have a panel of people talking about, okay. and if they're just going to talk about drag, local drag, whatever, mm. I'm not into drag that much that I'm going to sit there and watch them kiki about random most stuff. of the fans only want to hear drag race girls talk about these things that are drag race specific because that's why they follow tamisha bob bonet and whatever mm -hmm. that's just the tea they follow you and they support you because they like you but if you're going to talk about something drag specific you need to make sure whoever you're talking about is relevant to the drag race universe because that's who the, the children know yeah and if you're going to let bring up some girl named Patty Cake from Atlanta. Who's a legend. Legendary. It doesn't have any relevance to me because I haven't been introduced to her. <laughs> yeah, on TV. Unfortunately, but that's the way the cookie crumbles. Yeah. I feel like that's all I have to say on Tamisha. I, mean, I, I was disappointed. I was disappointed. I was a little... I, I, my blood was boiling a little bit. I was so mad. I was like, I was ready to hear a reading session and live my best life. I had my wine in front of me. I was like, this is going to be good. I've been disappointed in Tamisha ever since she said, um, I don't care about the contract. I'm going to say what I want to say, blah, 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 blah. Because I'm like, what problem did you have with World of Wonder that was so bad? Like I said, you were one of the most loved fan favorite queens from the season. I mean, You didn't go that far, but you knew you weren't going to go that far. You just came to have some fun, da, 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 da. Your booking fee goes up. Life goes on. So what did World of Wonder do to you? Not saying that they couldn't have. Oh, but she, like, she, I don't know if she said what they did to her, but I do know that because of the music video, she was pissed that she couldn't even put up her own video. But that is that, like, come on, girl. I, yeah, I feel like you should have known you that. You can't put a piece of something that aired on national television on your personal YouTube page to make money off of. It just doesn't work like that. Yeah. What she should have done was put it up on her YouTube before, but then she couldn't do it. Like, it's it's but, what it is. But the the videos were produced for the finale. Yeah. Wow asked each of the girls to make a video. You are making a video for this production, not for your own. You know what I mean? I think it's one of those things where she's an older queen and she didn't really understand like how YouTube works and how copyright works and how ownership of 
you know, material work. She didn't get it. And when the lawyer probably explained it to her, she felt jilt like, oh, I was blindsided. But no, every no, no other girl, no other girl tried to upload their video on their YouTube. Maybe it's because she's older and she also probably doesn't have a great team. But oh, I don't think her team is great. She probably did. All. She probably did invest some money into the video thinking that it could also be something for her. But you can't. You give someone something to air on TV, that's that's it. That ain't yours no more, honey. Exactly. Not at all. Um, oh, and she's probably thinking, because she says, if World of Wonder can email her telling her what she can and what she cannot say, they can email her asking her if she's okay and probably asking her if she's available for a gig. And they've never emailed her asking her to be a part of anything so she feels like they're only giving certain girls opportunities. It happens but the every season year. that ended like just two weeks ago. I mean, who who's who from season thirteen has done gigs <laughs> at Wow's request? Child, I don't know exactly. So what did she think she's getting getting a call for? I know like Simone is booked for some stuff, but I don't know if it's specifically under Wow Presents. Like I don't know if. Normally, they have, like, a tour for the season. I don't know if that's going on because of COVID. I don't know. But she feels jilted. She feels overlooked. And she is mad. I just... Like, the dust from the season has to settle. <laughs> for you to be overlooked. You know what I mean? And then she kept saying certain things, like, throughout all that. If not just today's live, but, like, for the past week. She kept mentioning certain things that she said something like, Who's going to tell me how to do drag? Not you. Not you, like, to the fans. And not a biological woman. Mm. And then I I heard that comment. And I said to myself immediately, Girl, tread lightly because you don't want to offend. And you don't want to say the wrong thing. Because it's a very different climate here. Uh, but I knew she wasn't talking about Got Mick. But a lot of fans took it and like, Ooh, Ooh, she's talking about Got Mick. She's coming for Got Mick. But I was like, no, I feel like maybe one of the fans came into her comment section and tried to tell her something that she wasn't here for. And when she went on the person's page, it was a woman who was telling her how to do drag. And in Tamisha's mind, is like, you're a fan and you're a you're this woman who's ha you're just a fan who happens to be a woman trying to tell me how to do what I do. So I think that's what it was. And she did explain that is what it was. So stop trying to say she's talking about Gottmik when she didn't mean that. She just has a really big problem with the fans, which I can understand. The fans are... Oh, the fans awful. are crazy. There was a, remember this one person? Um, I don't remember their name, but they were commenting on every single thing I did and everything they had a problem with. I'm like, if my videos don't bring you joy, please find other content. Yeah. And finally, they stopped harassing me. Some of the fans are, are so nasty, though. I don't, I, I don't know what it is. They're lonely and they're weird. I'm not talking to all y'all. <laughs> the ones that are cool, we cool. We kiki in my comment section and it's fine. But some people, they get up and they watch you. And even if they there's nothing bad, they have something to say. Because it's their point of duty to have a fight on the internet to feel relevant. I guess so. To feel seen. They're probably really lonely at home and they're like, I need a friend. I need to feel seen. So let me curse you out. Then you're going to see me and reply to me. And that's like great. Yeah, I guess they want to feel seen. I don't know. I say that you hear me talk shit about Joey J all the time. But <laughs> I don't like at Joey J on Twitter and say, ooh, girl, you are shit. But some of them do. Yeah. Some just... of them try to send personal messages, say like, you deserve to die, blah, blah, oh, blah. Oh, that's never okay. I always say, I, you know, I'm not, I'm like hard to please whenever I'm a customer uh, anywhere. I'm mm -hmm. not the easiest customer. Like, I'm the good customer, but if I feel like you're not doing a good job, I'll be like in my feelings. But it takes a lot for me to even leave a le Yelp review. Like, it takes a lot out of me because by the time I leave your establishment, I'm over it. Right. Over it. If I watch Drag Race and I feel like somebody was like not great, I'm reacting right away and I'll probably not even give them a really harsh critique. I'll just be like, this was not it, girl, whatever, move on. But I'll never like say, 
you're disgusting. I can't believe you're even doing drag. You're not great. You're horrible. Get the hell off my TV screen, bitch. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Or yet alone going to someone's inbox and be like, you know your shit though, right? And even when people, sometimes people on the show do things that I think are foul, but it's just a moment in time. Yeah. Like, it's just a moment in time that happened to be captured on camera. It doesn't mean that's who the person is, exactly. like, all the time. Exactly. Like, Tamisha is, like, going off and she was doing a lot of things, but I don't think Tamisha's a bitter person. People, I remember someone was like, oh, and Monet said this, actually. <laughs> Monet said, when she did the video with Bob about Tamisha, they're like, uh, Monet said, um, I hear people talking about Tamisha and saying this is who she is, like, she starts fights because... They say even in Atlanta, she's been banned from a few pageants because she don't like oh, critique. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She yeah. don't like when nobody critiques her. So, <laughs> but I don't know. I don't think Tamisha's a bitter person. I think Tamisha's just a person that was offended and she was a little hurt. That's it. Understandable. But if you like this, please go comment. Let us know what you thought and share it with your friends. The more people hear it, the better for me, because this is what I do, and I like the support, and I like the kiki with everyone. Um, by the way, I'm doing a reaction to Pose each week, and I'm doing a recap of Legendary each week, so check that out on my YouTube channel. It's going to be great, and I'm so excited for Drag Race Spain. That's coming up soon, and I'm also doing Drag Race Down Under. Down Under. So much drag that's Which going involves on. New Zealand queens, not just Australian queens. They keep reminding me in my comments. <laughs> say it again for the people in the back. There. That's why I made sure to say Drag Race Down Under, which encompasses all them hoes, because mm -hmm. I cannot be bothered. I may, I think I slipped up and said, oh, Drag Race Australia. They they were quick to let me know. Jeez. So I'm like, I will not make that to mistake me, again. Like, I'm sorry. It's like looking at season 11 and then being like, oh, the American girls. In the, but Brooklyn's there too. Yeah, the, yeah, and the Canadian girl, the American and the Canadian girl, girl. It's not that serious. Well, people are very territorial. Like they're they're very proud of where they are. So if you miss like leave them out, they feel like they're they're not seen or whatever. And the, I was talking to you the other day. The people who say, "I wish there was more New Zealand representation." And there's like th there's ten. three out. Of, there was three out of ten. Yes, one went home, but there was three out. Of, that's thirty percent. That's a lot. And then we looked at the population. New Zealand has 5 million people. Australia has 25 million. Which is like so I feel proper like, representation. I feel like 3 out of 10 girls is decent. Proper, proper representation. It's decent to me. And they're saying they need more girls of color. They need more um, Aboriginal girls. And that's okay for me to say Aboriginal because that's how they identify in that corner of the world. Just in case someone comes for me for that word. <laughs> <laughs> we should have talked about Drag Race Australia. Child, I cannot. The, the Shoestring budget. Shoestring budget. They said we have $20. Is that enough to make the premiere episode? I was, I, I re, I was looking at some photos of it, and even the workstations, the tables are smaller, and they're shorter. <laughs> and and I was shorter. like... No, because when you see like Drag Race UK and America, yeah, the, the girls are tables. like jumping on the tables, yeah. and they're huge. When you see New Zealand... Uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> Down Under... Literally, everyone's standing over the table, and the table's probably hitting their knees. Their knees. I'm like, what is this? <sighs> oh, my God. And then um, I played it the other day, the kind of like Whatcha Packin' type show that they have for Australia. Yeah. Oh, How's your head? It is in Michelle's dressing room. Yeah. And it, the dressing room, room looks sad. It's just, it's just, yeah, just backstage on a couch. And it's so bad. Listen, Whatcha Packin' is normally like, the girls go home, and then they have... Like, back in the day, they would fly them back out to L.A. and then Michelle would do a whole thing in a studio. Now they would stay in their house on Zoom and Michelle and them do it um, that way. In, us, in Down Under, the minute you walk off stage, sashay away, you go wait in a corner. Michelle and Rue wrap up telling the girls, go Outfit backstage. Outfit still busted from your lip sync. Yes. Makeup sweating off your face. Like, literally... The Ten, disappointment of going home. Ten minutes ago, RuPaul says, "Sashay away, go home, you busted bitch. And then Michelle is going to be like, how do you what feel? What did you learn from this experience? What do you learn? I would be... 
and then giving you tea to drink. I, that would be a dangerous <laughs> thing because I'd throw it on somebody. I, I was wondering if it was just water. Because at tea. that point, I'm like, I'm heated. I'm, I spent money to come here. I'm going home. And you're going to ask me right in the same very moment, what did I learn? How did I feel? I'd be like, bitch, I learned that y'all are biased as hell. And I learned that mm-hmm. y'all ain't shit. But do you see that comment someone said? Michelle looked like she had an eye infection. <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. I laughed so hard. People in my comments are brutal. They are vicious. And they are funny. Oh. <laughs> but I think that's it, guys. We have been talking way longer than we thought we would have been. Uh, again, like, comment, subscribe. I love you guys so much. Bye.